Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, IU MBA course preview and thank you for your time. So we do appreciate your interest in our program and today we're going to invite uh, one of our professor, Frankie, to give this talk to everyone here. So now I will pass on to Frankie to give the presentation to everyone here. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to this webinar. My name is Frankie. And uh, just a little bit of uh, background and introduction of myself. I have been a lecturer teaching in various institutions uh, for the past 26 years. So I've been around for a long time. And uh, I've been teaching in all the private schools, you name them, I've been there. SIMP, SB, MDIS, Kaplan. Right now, I teach mainly in uh, 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 about two or three uh, institutions and um, Aventis has actually invited me to uh, conduct this uh, webinar to talk a little bit about the master's program offered by University of Roehampton. Uh, this is the program that I've been teaching for quite a few years and I would like to share with you my experience and tell you more. Now, I don't intend to actually make this into a um, lecture. You know, sometimes when you give an opportunity to the lecturer to talk, he will tend to talk nonstop. So I intend to make this into a sharing session. I would like to share with you my experience and also my uh, understanding of the education, especially private education uh, industry. So at any one time, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, uh, please raise your hands or you can actually type into the question and answer or in the chat room and I will be able to see uh, the questions or you can actually on your mic and ask the question if you want. To. All right, I'm just going to uh, uh, um, start my presentation right now. So this is the agenda for tonight. Right? Uh, we are, I'm going to start off by talking about the differences between UK, Australia and US MBA. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Roehampton uh, University and also the program that they offer here in Singapore. So without much further delay, let me start off by talking about the differences between UK, Australia, and US MBA. I think students are spoiled with choices. There are many, many different programs that are offered in Singapore. Predominantly, they come from either the UK or the Australian uh, or Australia. Uh, Australian universities tend to be more popular for a simple reason because of proximity. Uh, you ask anybody on the street if they have heard of university like University of Sydney or Curtin University, out of 10, probably about 7 to 8 will tell you, yes, they have heard of it. But if you were to ask them about, you know, certain UK university, they may not have heard of it. But knowing that there is such a university in Australia does not necessarily mean that it is the right program for you. So I would like to give you a brief background about what these universities are all about coming from different countries and what are the main differences. Now, we will start off by talking about the UK universities. Eh? Now, you all do know that the Singapore education system is modeled after the British education system. Uh, the O level, the A levels and all that. So, um, and therefore, UK, our education system tend to be very similar to the UK universities. Now, traditionally, the UK universities tend to be very exam focused. You know, it's like your O level, A level. Uh, you must have heard of students studying with a uh, University of London. One examination will determine your fate. So traditionally, the UK universities, they tend to place a lot of emphasis on examination, but that has changed. All right, now increasingly, a lot of universities are moving away from examination. Some universities, they still have the examination component, but the weightage is actually very, very low. All right, the weightage is actually very low. So I would like to start off by telling you about the different types of universities uh, that are available in the UK. The first is what we call the Russell Group. Now, these are the universities that have been around for many, many years. These are the universities that focus mainly on research work. All right, so therefore, these are research universities like University of London, Birmingham, you have Manchester University, Liverpool University, Reading, Nottingham, so on and so forth. Now, these are what we call the Russell Group University, and there must be something like about 25 to 30 of them. And regardless, regardless of what the ranking is, they will always be the top 40 universities in, in, in the UK. They will always be ranked. You need to understand that universities are ranked mainly based on research outcome. And therefore, these Russell Group universities being research focused, naturally, their ranking will be higher. And besides, they have a long history. Eh? They have been around for 200 years, 300 years, 400 years. So therefore, they have a long history. And as a result of that, they can boast about their academic achievements. 
So as a result of that, their ranking will always tend to be higher. Now then the second group of universities are what we call the teaching universities. They are not the research universities and most of the universities in the UK are like that. So to make it easy for you to understand, let's draw a parallel with the local universities. And I'm sure you all are very familiar with the local university system. We have four different universities, uh, public universities right now that offer the business uh, uh, courses, NUS, NTU, SMU, and uh, SUSS. Now, if you like, NUS and NTU are the research universities. They belong to the Russell Group equivalent in the UK. SMU and SUSS, they are not research universities. They are actually teaching universities. And therefore, in this case, their assessments will tend to be more practical because they want to teach the students and prepare them for real world. Whereas the research universities, they are preparing the students for further studies for research work. So in this case, you can see how the teaching universities have gained a lot of popularity over the years. They are equivalent to our polytechnics. Our polytechnics are the ones that actually all right, focus the people, focus on helping the students and preparing them for the real world. So when they step out to the real world to work, they are ready. So the teaching universities tend to focus more on teaching rather than on research. So Roehampton belongs to this category. They are called the teaching university. Roehampton is not interested in research output. Now, then the third type of universities are what we call polytechnic turn universities. Uh, Singapore actually adopted the polytechnic system from the UK. And then about 30 years ago, UK abolished the polytechnic system. Singapore still keep the polytechnic system. So therefore, in this case, all the polytechnics in the UK have been converted into higher education institutions. They become universities. So you would have heard of universities like Anglia, Politan, Uni Anglia Polytechnic University, Manchester Metropol Metropolitan University, Northumbria University. All these universities, they were once upon a time polytechnics, they became university. Now, what happened here is that over the years, because all these universities, they want to improve on their ranking, so a lot of all these universities, they have also slowly focused more on research work. They have focused more on research output. So as a result of that, you see how uh, universities, their rankings start to make improvement because they focus more on research. So very soon, they will also become a research university. The fourth type of university, all right, the fourth type of university are the newer generation of universities. And this, you will see that their ranking is very, very low, right at the bottom, because they are very new, no history to boast about. So, for example, like, uh, you know, we talk about Bedfordshire University, all right, we talk about, say, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, what else? Oxford Brookes Universities that they have been around only for about what 40, 50 years. So they don't have much history to boast about. All right, these are the newer generation of universities. And if you like, they are equivalent to our Singapore SUTD. All right, equivalent to our Singapore, where you know Nanyang Fine Arts and uh, you know they are going to become an arts university, SUSS, all these they are what we call the new universities. So if you were to look at their ranking, they are right at the bottom. All right. So therefore, these are traditionally the four different types of universities that are available in the UK. So Roehampton belongs to the second group. We are the teaching university. We are not a research university. Now, then the next one will be Australia. Australia tend to be more popular because a lot of students in Singapore, parents out of 10 foreign graduates, six of them would have gone to Australia uh, to study. So Australia, they focus more on coursework plus examination. And Australia, it is more modular based. Eh? That's why you have to do more subjects in an Australian program, either bachelor or at the postgraduate level. So they focus more on coursework plus exam. So one module could easily have a group presentation plus a written assignment plus an examination. Minimum, they will have three components. Now, types of universities in Australia, basically there are only two types. Uh, the group of eight universities, these are all the state universities. For example, University of Adelaide, University of Sydney, Western Australia, University of Melbourne, you have got uh, ANU, you have got Monash universities. These are mainly what we call the state universities. They are the group eight. Now, therefore, these are the universities that are actually right on top. 
Now, in Australia, they have 30 over universities, eh? which means if you don't belong to the group of eight, then you must be the other universities. And among the other universities, there is no ranking at all. All right, they don't rank because why the Australian government have decided that different universities will focus on different strengths. So, for example, one university may be popular in the arts. The other university may be popular in healthcare. The other universities may be popular in maritime research, so on and so forth. So, in Australia, they have decided not to rank the universities. So, if you don't belong to the group of eight, the G8 universities, then you belong to the rest of the universities in Australia. Then, of course, we also have the U.S. University. Now, you know the U.S. universities, uh, they are not very popular in Singapore, eh? Now, just to let you know, a, a brief background, MBA originated from US. It was the USA, uh, it was the US university that created the MBA program. So what happened here is that the reason why they are not very popular in this part of the world, because number one, it is too expensive. Number two, it is too far away. All right, it is just too far away. And more importantly, 80 to 85% of the universities in US, they are privately funded which means, all right, in US, education is a profitable business. So if you like, you can actually invest in a business school and then you become the CEO of the business school. So you will see the business school is being sold away to this group. The business school is sold to another group after a few years. So therefore, in, the U, uh, in USA, education is a profitable business. They run it like a business. And sometimes you will also sadly hear of certain universities that have gone bankrupt. They have no money. All right, because they lost a lot of money. So most of the universities in the uh, US are actually privately funded. And as a result of that, you, can, you have to be very careful. Eh? So they tell you that this university is recognized. But recognized by who? They are altogether 46 states in the, U uh, in the US. Now, it may be recognized in one state, but not recognized in another state. So what's the point? But the truth of the matter is that if you do not belong to the state university like MIT and so on and so forth, all right, all these big uh, brand names, then you belong to the rest of the universities, most of which are actually privately funded. So my advice to you is that, all right, don't even consider the US university. They are very, very few in Singapore. Most of them, if not all, are actually privately funded. Most of them are actually privately funded. So my advice to you is that don't even consider the US university. So therefore, we are down to two, either UK or Australia. All right. So at this point, is there any question? That, are there any questions that you would like to ask me before I move on? Are there any questions? Can I ask if you can switch on your mic and talk to me? Or, or All right. Let me just see. There's a Q&A. What do you think of University of South Wales origin from UK? Um, to be honest with you, I am not able to answer the question on uh, what, what I think of a particular university. And I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, for a simple reason, it is because um, the university, different universities, they cater to different crowd. So I cannot be comparing one university with another university. Is that okay, Ken? So I want to be as objective as possible because like I've said, I teach on many university programs. So I do not want to be a hypocrite to tell you Roehampton is the best and the rest is not. Because tomorrow I might be teaching on the other university program. So I want to be as objective as possible. All right. Uh, anybody else have any questions for me at this point? All right. Let me just see. There's another question. All right. Supply chain versus business admin. Uh, Jimson, uh, you would like to ask what is the difference, is it? between B MBA and a, a, a postgraduate diploma, a, a postgraduate qualification in supply chain. Jimson, is that your question? Uh, I'm not too sure if you are able to... Uh. Yes, Prabha. Yes, okay. Jimson, I'll talk about it shortly, all right? I'll talk about it shortly, all right? Can just just hold on for a while. Uh. Prabha, yes, you're right. Certain universities program are two years and some are less than a year. Uh, Roehampton is about the only MBA offered in Singapore that is for 10 months. It is less than a year. The rest are at least about 15 to 16 months. And I'll explain to you why this is so shortly, all right? I'll explain to you why this is so. Are there any questions? If no, I would like to move on. So let's talk about the MBA program. Now, Jimson, here is where I'm going to explain to you what is the difference between an MBA and uh, an MSc. 
Now, Master of Business Administration originally was developed for the non-business students, which means if you have got a diploma in business administration or business management or diploma in, say, marketing, diploma in, say, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, mass, uh, sorry, not mass, uh, in HR or whatever, all right, chances are students will not pursue an MBA. Chances are. The reason is because originally the MBA was created for the non-business student. So who should take the MBA traditionally? Doctors, lawyers, architects, accountants, engineers, IT people. They are the ones who should do an MBA program. All right, because they want to have a feel of what business management is all about. And one day, who knows? Even as a doctor, one day you may be running your own hospital. You know, the Roehampton program, we actually, I taught a, a doctor and he actually told me the reason why he pursued the MBA is because one day he hopes that he will be able, all right, to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, run a hospital or run a, a, a clinic or a group of clinics. And therefore, he needs to know how to manage the business. So therefore, traditionally, MBA was never created for the business students. So, Jimson, where do the business students go to? Eh? The business students will then go to what we call specialized masters, specializing in supply chain, specializing in HR, specializing in uh, marketing, so, so on and so forth. But even so, Jimson, can I tell you this? Even so, because MBA, the title is more prestigious. Therefore, a lot of the business students, they will still choose to do an MBA. A lot of the business students, the reason is because MBA, the title, tend to be more prestigious. So if you like, an MBA program will prepare you to take on more strategic role in the organization, to become a COO, CEO, GM. To become a GM, you must have a general feel of the business. I've never come across a GM all right, who is a specialist. A GM must be a generalist. But if you were to do a specialized program in, say, logistics, supply chain management, then chances are you can only do supply chain management. You can't do anything else. So it is for this reason a lot of people prefer to do an MBA. The reason is because it will open up more doors. Even though you have a business background, many will still choose to do an MBA. The reason is because it opens up more doors. Is that okay? All right, now let's move on, yeah? Okay, so I would like to talk a little bit about London. Now, you all know what London is, all right? It is actually a financial hub, all right? Uh, it has got 500 over uh, global MNCs, uh, and, and therefore London is a very popular place for doing business. The Forex market in London is among the best in the whole world, all right? So therefore, London is home to leading global MNCs, and we want to talk about Roehampton University. It has got a very long history, all right? It started in 1841, so more than 100, coming to 176 years, all right? So they have graduated so many, many different cohorts of students. So therefore, it is a well-established university. It is not a new university in the UK. All right, so therefore, it is accredited by the Quality Assurance Agency in UK. We call it a QAA. Uh, uh, and it is like the ISO in uh, the field of academic, uh, uh, in the field of academia in the UK. Eh? All right, so why is Roehampton University popular? Uh, especially so in Singapore, Aventis has seen more than 22 batches uh, of students. So, Roehampton is ranked the best modern university. Now, that does not mean that they are a new university. Eh? There is a difference between new and modern, isn't it? The word modern basically means Roehampton ha must have spent a lot of money investing in technology, modernizing the university. All right, so that was actually ranked in uh, 2020 uh, by all the three uh, uh, popular uh, 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 groups, the Sunday Times, the Guardian, and also the Good University Guide. Um, the London, in the program here in Singapore, we have over 21 successful intakes. Uh, the, most, the recent one is uh, batch number 22. Now, the good news is that it's 100% coursework. One assignment, that's it. All right. But of course, the assignment is actually quite a rigorous assignment. You can imagine it's about 3,000 to 3,500 words. And the assignments are all very practical assignments, basically talking about, you know, companies, real case study. We will ask the students to look at the case studies and then complete the assignment. So there is a difference, therefore, between Roehampton being a teaching university and you going to University of London, which is a research university. 
So a research university will emphasize a lot of academic rigor. A teaching university will focus more on practical aspect of it. So you compare A-level with polytechnic, you will be able to understand. So our A-level students, the junior college students will focus a lot on academic rigor memorizing, you know, certain 10 year, past 10 year series or whatever. Whereas in the polytechnic, it is more practical because why the polytechnics want to prepare the students for the real world. So Roehampton belongs to that category. Is that okay? Okay. Now let's move on. So Roehampton University, they focus a lot of on what we call, uh, you know, creating the next generation of leaders. They And as a result of that, there is this very practical aspect of uh, practical aspects to the syllabus where we want to focus on practical application rather than on research outcomes. So in this case, what happened here is that the university focused more on teaching. But that does not mean that there is no research. Huh? Obviously, there is. But you know what happened here is that we tend to place more emphasis on teaching rather than on research work. All right. And uh, this MBA program is ranked the eighth largest part-time MBA in Singapore uh, and is run out of Aventis. Like I said, we have about 21 successful intake already. You might become the 23rd intake. Uh, and, and therefore, in this case, you can see uh, many students, they actually come on this program. Now, at this point, uh, I would like to just emphasize on one thing. You know, I was just having a talk with somebody uh, the other day during lunch, uh, they were my um, Roehampton students. They have graduated. And I realized one thing, like I've told you just now, I've been teaching on many different university programs. And what happened here is that um, the interesting thing about Roehampton University is, even though the ranking may not be really, really impressive, it is not. I have to be honest with you. I cannot be telling you that Roehampton is the best university in the UK. Nobody will believe. But all I'm telling you that it is not the worst. It is not the best. It is not the worst. It is somewhere maybe in the middle or slightly below the middle. Now, even so, surprisingly, later on, you will see the profile of our students. You know, Roehampton universities attract a lot of high-profile students. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, I've taught students who are lawyers who are doctors. I even have CEO of Qantas. The CEO of Quant Southeast Qantas in Southeast Asia, when he was based in Singapore, he was in my Roehampton class. I have marketing director of Royal Park Royal Collection uh, Hotel Group. I have also a CEO of a trade union. I have many GM and many CEO. Right now, I'm teaching. A, I just finished a course two weeks ago. I have so many students from seven different countries. Some of them are managing directors, GM, so on and so forth, and earning a lot of money. And I just have to scratch my head. Why would they want to choose Roehampton program? And there was once I actually asked this CEO of Qantas. He told me very honestly, he said, Frankie, to be honest with you, I only want to pass. I'm not interested in all the rara and all the, you know, you tell telling me, you know, getting an A or not. I'm already a CEO of Qantas. I just want to get an MBA and move on with my life. And that's all. So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. The Roehampton program attracts a totally different crowd of students. These are the students who have spent 20, 25, 30 years of their life climbing up their, building up their career, climbing up the corporate ladder. Today, they are so successful. So right now, they suddenly realize that, hey, I need to get an MBA. And the only reason is because most of their staff already got a bachelor's degree and they don't have. So therefore, what happened is that most of them are back here getting an MBA so that they can be above their staff. You know? So therefore, these are the classmates that you will be having when you join this program. And I can promise you, all right, these students are very high profile students. And one of the most valuable uh, takeaway from the MBA program is networking, that you are able to build a very strong network and keep in touch with each other. So I meet up with my Roehampton X students ever so often for drinks, for dinner and all that. And we'll still be talking about a good fun time that we had in the class. And they are all successful. In fact, more successful than me because these are the ones who have spent so many years of their life, all right, building up their career. Now, I see quite a number of questions at this point of time. I would like to stop for a while and answer this question. Hadip asks, would recruiters be looking at the period you spend on MBA 10 months for a pro MBA may look a little strange. Hadip, be honest with you, like I told you just now, 
that people coming onto the MBA program, they have already, all right, they have already uh, uh, achieved certain things in life. They just need to get an MBA. To be honest, Hadip, uh, these are the students, with or without the MBA, they will not lose their job. So will, would the certificate show the duration? The answer is no. It won't show the duration. At the end of the day, whatever qualification you take, even if you were to do a three-year MBA course, Hadeep, there is no guarantee that you will be able to get a job because the qualification can only open up the door. Then it is up to you to decide how you want to convince your potential employer to hire you, whether you, you should be hired or not. All right. So therefore, I hope that has answered your question. Uh, hi, are the assignment group? No, it is all individual basis. It is all done on individual basis. Okay. So are there any more questions? Uh, do accreditation, Frank, the answer is yes. Accreditation matters. And then I'm telling you, Roehampton is accredited. But then again, Frank, all right, who is the accreditation body? Different countries, we have different accreditation bodies, eh? So what happened is that UK, the main accreditation body is the QAA. And therefore, in this case, I'm telling you that Roehampton is accredited. But the ranking and accreditation are two different things altogether. Is that okay? Ken, are there any more questions? Are there any more questions? Uh, yes, I will be. Amos, I will be the one teaching. I teach about two to three modules on the master's. How long can we stretch to complete the course? Um, <sighs> this is a good question. Eh? 10 months is very fast. Eh? Can I tell you this? So if you decide to come on the course, you have to be committed and finish it. And, and, and if I may say, I'm not boasting about it. The dropout rate is very, very low. All right. The dropout rate is very, very low. So if you want to actually... If you really want to um, come onto the course, then you must be committed. 10 months is very fast. Snap your finger, you are done. So, and bear in mind, you will not be all, the only one going through this program. Many people will also go through this program together with you. Uh, all my students, you know, they like it so much. The reason is because they, they are so close to each other and they are able to uh, help each other and they become very good friends. Like I told you, the biggest, the most valuable takeaway uh, from an MBA program is networking. All right, next question, Hadeep. Are there exemptions for certain modules? I No, unfortunately, no. Uh, not for an MBA program. Jimson, the other top eight part-time MBA is, uh, I have no idea. Uh, we are talking, um, we, when we talk about a top MBA program, we are not talking about the ranking, uh, Jimson. We are talking about the number of students here. All right. We are talking about the number of students. We are not talking about the ranking. So therefore, uh, we are the top eight largest MBA program in Singapore. That's what I'm saying. All right. Govin, is there break during the 10 months? There will be. So later on, we will talk about it. All right. Later on, we will talk about it shortly. Uh, don't have to worry, Gavin, uh, because Govin, don't have to worry. Uh, I will talk more about how the program is structured shortly. Okay. Is it a regional or international accredited? Okay, Prince asked this question. Very good question, uh, Prince. Is the classification of... Yes, uh, there is a classification. Uh, either you graduate with a distinction or you graduate with an MBA. All right, there is classification. Okay, Prince, I would like to answer your question right now. AACSB is actually for those universities who want to boost their ranking. And these are the universities that are very research-based. What it means is this. <clears throat> if you want to be double ACSB accredited, at least 75% of your faculty must have a doctorate degree and must do research work. The other 25% of your lecturers can actually be practitioners like myself. All right. So therefore, if you go for a double ACSB accredited university, chances are they will be research-based university. All right. Remember I told you just now, that uh, we are actually a teaching university, all right? Good. Jimson, I mean the largest part-time MBA is which university? Uh, I do not know, Jimson. I really do not know which one is the largest MBA in Singapore. Uh, do we get access to the Roehampton Alumni Network? Yes, you do, Sebastian. You know, our students, <laughs> uh, because of technology nowadays, uh, Sebastian, uh, our students, they have a lot of group chats and the group chats can actually go, can have four different batches of students in one group chat. 
So you will definitely, once you join the Rohanton program in the first month, you'll be invited to join the, the, the different, you know, uh, uh, groups. And then that's where you will introduce yourself to all your seniors. Your seniors will be able to give you some tips, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, how to study and all that kind of thing. So therefore, what, one thing I like about the Rohanton students is that they are very close to each other. So I've taught something like about 200 of them now. And what happened here is that... Uh, it is really uh, quite amazing that the students still want to keep in touch with each other. What is the proportion of students with distinction? I would say about 20%. I would say about 20%. But can I tell you this, uh, uh, whoever you are, because it's anonymous, uh, I, I can tell you this, uh, an MBA is an MBA. Now, of course, if you want to get an MBA with distinction, by all means, please go ahead. But like I've told you, most of my Rohampton students, they are not interested. They are only interested in getting an MBA and then move on with their lives. Remember, a lot of my MBA students on the Roehampton program are already very successful in the industry. They are either senior managers, GM, you know, um, uh, a COO, so on and so forth. So even though you are just now a senior executive, come into the program, mix around with all these people, and then one day you will be introduced to one job. You know, <laughs> all right? They may actually have more a uh, 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 job offer, and and then they will actually uh, offer it to you. Uh, just keep in touch with the alumni. All right, and that's the beauty of it. All right, because bear in mind, like I've said, the profile of the students is really pretty impressive. Just two days ago, I went out for dinner with a group of students, and they are from Myanmar. The Myanmar students based in Singapore, they are doing my uh, the Rohampton uh, program with us. This guy, he told me he's from Myanmar and he is one of the top engineers uh, working for Shell in Singapore. And he is actually drawing more than 20K a month. And he was very honest with me. He said, Frankie, I've spent so many years of my life building up my career. The reason why I'm doing my MBA right now is really for self-actualization. And also to prove to my son that if daddy can do it, you can do it. So therefore, I've got all these MBA students who are very successful in life already. But they are just coming into the MBA program so that they want to learn new things, open up their mind to see a different world. That's about it. So if you were to come into this program, trust me, you will be in touch with all these people. You know? And perhaps among some of you, you are already successful in your own right. I do not know. All right, so you may be successful in your own right and all you need is just an MBA. So why bother about distinction? Of course, if you are able to get a distinction, by all means, please go ahead. You know, all right, I'm not stopping you from getting a distinction, but remember this, when you come onto the Roehampton MBA program, you are actually coming in, you know, because you want to have the network, because you want to learn new things, and that's all. It is not really about the ranking of the university. It is not really about research work, so on and so forth. All right, if you are so concerned about the ranking and all that, please go NUS, NTU, SU, SMU. All right, uh, if that is what your concern is. But I'm telling you, the Roehampton University program actually appealed to a different group of people who are very successful, uh, who have already succeeded in life, and they are just getting their MBA program right now because they want to learn new things. I mean, I even have two Israeli students. Right now in my class, I have a German. Right now in my class, I have a British student. I have taught two Israeli students. One of them is already a VP of a very successful company. And when he came into my MBA course, I felt that I was learning more from him than he learned from me because he was actually able to contribute a lot and share his experience with a lot of people. And that is the beauty of this Roehampton MBA. I enjoy teaching it so much. The reason is because I find that I'm learning so much from the uni, uh, from the students. Yep. Uh, the course fee, we will talk about it later on. Yeah? We will come to that slide shortly. Okay, can I move on? Can I move on? All right. Now, uh, the good news is that uh, hot from the oven, uh, a few months ago, what happened is that the Roehampton MBA program in Singapore is accredited by IHRP, which is actually a professional body for HR. And I'm talking about the MSc program, eh? the MSc of Global HR offered by Roehampton University. Sorry, my mistake. It was not the MBA, but the MSc program, all right, uh, majoring in HR, they are accredited by the Institute of Human Resource Professionals. And that actually gives us a lot of ammunition because not many master's program in Singapore majoring in HR got this accreditation. All right, this accreditation, IHRP is actually a professional body supported by the tripartite partners, which includes MOM, NTUC, and SNAP. 
So therefore, that is good news for us. We have a lot of ammunition now to show people that, hey, our Roehampton program is actually good, <laughs> you know, uh, because it is uh, actually recognized now by uh, IHRP. Okay, now we want to talk about the program structure. 10 months now, very intensive. But can I tell you this? The reason why we want to do that is because this program, we want to make it as appealing as possible to the part-time students. All right, we want to make it as appealing as possible to the part-time students because we recognize that some of you will need to travel. And that's the reason why, all right, number one, it is fully online. So even if you are traveling, go anywhere you want, just log onto the class. So I actually have a student, just last weekend, I conducted a, a, a module. All right, this student was actually in Poland. Last term, last term, all right, I had a student located in UK. Now, in the event, because of the time difference, sometimes it is really very difficult, eh? all right, for you to stay up uh, so early, so stay up so late in, in the night to attend the class. Then all you need to do is just go and watch the recording because all lessons will be recorded. So therefore, this program is structured in such a way that we will make it very appealing to the part-time students. So all classes will be on weekends. Then you will say, huh, I have to burn all my weekends. Come on, guys, it is just 10 months. All right, and one month, you only need to burn two weekends. All right, it's not even 10 months, you know, because we are talking about seven uh, 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 thought modules. So it's seven months of teaching. So which means you take seven, is 14 weekends burn. The rest is just time spent for dissertation. So therefore, during the weekdays, you can travel because the classes are all on the weekend. Again, like I said, if you happen to be overseas, never mind. Just log on wherever you are because it is done online. Prabha asks, is there a difference between MBA and EMBA? The answer is yes. Prabha, EMBA insists that the students must have X number of years of experience. So if you want to go into an executive MBA, you must be somebody with experience. An MBA, you do not need it. An MBA, if you have got a bachelor's degree or you have got uh, some professional qualification, you'll be qualified to do an MBA. So an executive MBA requires people with a uh, 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 working experience. So that is the main difference between EMBA and MBA. All right. Uh, by right, I would think that our Roehampton program should be called EMBA because all our students actually have work experience. So by right, it should be called EMBA. But the main difference is one week. Is mandatory for you to have, all right, a work experience. MBA doesn't require that. Jimson asks, intensive in terms of assignment, will it be harder to get a pass? No, the passing mark is 50 marks, Jimson. Uh, to be honest with you, Jimson, uh, <laughs> I, uh, my name is Frank, so I want to be as frank as possible. All right, Ken, you cannot expect yourself to like all modules. There will always be some subjects that you don't like. So some subjects you may have to struggle a little bit, all right, uh, but most of the time, honestly, uh, failing rate, uh, very low, you know. Uh, there will always be that one in the whole class that will fail. Eh? You know, some people, they may have gone into a territory that only God can help. Uh, you know, no matter what you do, somehow that student, for whatever reason, cannot make it. So, um, uh, Jimson, all right, most, if not all, the students will pass. All right, the pass mark is 50 marks, it's not 60 marks, eh? Uh, Yun, is it Chiyun? Is EMBA more suitable for fraud? No, Chiyun, it is just a matter of branding. Like I told you, a uh, Roehampton program, because all the students have working experience, so by right, the Roehampton program should also be called EMBA. So, therefore, the, diff the EMBA and the MBA is a matter of branding. The reason why they put that EMBA is because. All right, there is a requirement there. The requirement is that you must have work experience. The MBA will accept people with work experience and at the same time, they will also consider those people with no work experience. So therefore, that is the main difference between EMBA and MBA. All right, and if for that matter, certain universities, even when they call it an MBA, they still require students to have a certain number of work experience. Does that answer your question, Chiun? I hope I do. All right, I hope I did. Eh? When is the next intake if I could not make it for this current intake? Uh, I think I'll leave it to the Adventist. Uh, can somebody from Adventist please uh, uh, um, um, uh, answer George's question? Because, all right, good. Can somebody please answer George's question? Huh? All right, good. So far, is it okay? So that for each module, you have 30 hours. We have a lot of fun, <laughs> honestly. Uh, can I tell you this? Uh, Pre-COVID, we had face-to-face. 
And the students, we had a lot of fun in the class. Then because of COVID, we switched to online and a lot of students don't like online initially. And now they like online and you, we try to ask them to come back to the class. They say no. <laughs> they don't want to come back to the class. So what happened here is that, um, uh, so a lot of students have a lot of fun doing the online course, you know, and sometimes, you know, uh, it really depends on the dynamics of the class. Some students, you know, they, they are so, we, we had a lot of crazy fun, especially for my module at least, because I'm a crazy lecturer myself. We actually have a lot of crazy fun during the online lesson. So that for 30 hours, yeah, over two weekends, it should be quite okay. All right. A lot of students, trust me, you may say that, ah, very strong, no, very tough, you know, we got to burn so many weekends. Trust me, I meet up with so many of my ex-students who have graduated from the program. All of them are now missing the weekend classes. They say, suddenly, Frankie, I don't know what to do on Saturday. Like, nothing to do. I say, now you can go on holiday already. What? You know why? They miss that camaraderie. They miss the time where online, they are chit-chatting with their friends through their group chat while having lesson, gossiping about the lecturer. So therefore, they miss all those things. All right? They actually miss all those things. Okay, good. I can see that a lot of people seem to know me, uh, Sarah and just now Amos, is it? Uh, I'm so sorry I may have forgotten you all. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry I may have forgotten you all. Huh? Okay, come, let's move on. Uh, you all must be my students from another institution, right? Uh, Amos and Sarah. I'm so sorry. Okay, never mind. Let's move on. Okay, good. Okay, now, the MBA program, like I've told you, all right, it is actually for the generalists, the general practitioners, most of the students, because it is more prestigious, they will choose the MBA. Now, traditionally, and this is where I need to explain to all of you. Eh? Remember, just now I told you that traditionally the business students, all right, traditionally the business students, they will not join the MBA. Because in the Western world, there is another qualification, another pathway that is more prestigious than an MBA. And that will be what we call the professional qualification. So, for example, in the field of accounting, you would have heard of ACCA. In the field of marketing, you will have heard of CIM, Chartered Institute of Marketing. So, these are all postgraduate qualifications that are very difficult to pass. Eh? Really, very difficult to pass. So, what happened here is that the business students, they will go and do all these professional qualifications that are actually more difficult than a master's degree. Now, the professional, professional bodies are not universities. So they cannot award you with a degree. They can only award you with a postgraduate diploma. All right. Now, this postgraduate diploma in the UK are very prestigious. Eh? And that's why you see a lot of students who go and study ACCA to become chartered accountant. Now, because the professional bodies, they are not universities, they cannot award you with a master's degree. They can only give you postgraduate diploma. What happened here is that all the universities, then they realize, hey, there is a big market for professional qualifications. But because the universities are able to award you a degree, they don't call it postgraduate diploma. They call it master of science. All right, they call it master of science or master of arts. Now, therefore, the master of science and master of arts are created to specialize in a particular area. Just like your professional qualification, they specialize in accounting, specialize in marketing, specialize in logistics, specialize in supply chain management, supply, all right, specialize in digital marketing, so on and so forth. So Jimson asked the question just now, what is the difference between supply chain management masters and an MBA? This is the difference. Because in the Western world, Jimson, if you were to do a, a, a degree in or a qualification in supply chain management, most likely you will be pursuing a postgraduate diploma majoring in supply chain management. But because the universities are able to award you with a degree, they don't call it a postgraduate diploma. What do they call it? They actually call it a master of science or a master of arts, specializing in something. Therefore, it makes no sense at all. Eh? And this is where the Australian universities, they, make this they, they have this problem. Eh? It makes no sense at all for you to get an MBA bracket HR. It doesn't make sense. By right, it should be M Arts or M Science bracket HR because an MBA is a general qualification. It is not meant to specialize in a particular area. 
So you will see a lot of such master's degree offered in Australia. MBA bracket marketing, MBA bracket finance. It doesn't make sense. All right. So therefore, what makes sense is either an M science or M arts, which is a professional qualification equivalent. Remember, I told you because the universities are able to offer you a degree, they don't call it postgraduate diploma. They call it M science or M arts. Does that make sense to you? So therefore, Roehampton University offered major in HR, marketing, financial management. Uh, hold on, let me see. Uh, HR, uh, global marketing and financial management. The more popular one seems to be the HR. All right, the more popular one because we have a lot of HR practitioners coming in to do an MNC in HR. There is a question, let me answer it. Can you share more on how online classes are interactive? Maybe share your facilitation strategy. Ah, good question. <laughs> okay. Uh, what happened here is that, uh, to be honest with you, I can only speak for myself. Huh? I can't be speaking for the rest of my colleagues. I am actually trained in online teaching. So my online classes are very interactive. I use a lot of tech tools, like, basically. Uh, I use... Uh, uh, you know, at least about 10 tech tools to actually engage my students and there will be a lot of activities in the class. Uh, that is for me, for my lesson. I can't speak for the rest of the uh, colleagues. But of course, uh, you know, like I told you, certain modules uh, are very difficult to engage. Even face-to-face -face is difficult. For example, finance. You know, for example, subject like research methods, uh, they are by default very boring subjects. So therefore, in this case, a lot of students will find that it is quite boring, but like I told you, you cannot expect yourself to like all subjects. So all institutions face the same problem, all right? To answer your question, students will start complaining about lessons being boring online. I think it is really up to the uh, lecturers to decide how they want to make the lessons more interactive online. It is a huge challenge even for the lecturers because students tend to switch off their camera. They don't ask questions. And then even when you ask them questions, they don't participate. And sometimes because of broad, uh, sometimes because of connection problem, and then students get disconnected. And you know, we have all of this kind of problem and this kind of challenges. But by far, I think my students, they enjoy my lesson a lot. Uh, and I, I think it is quite okay. All right, by far. All right. So therefore, it really depends on, on the lecturers themselves and also on the students, you know. Sometimes the students, uh, I mean, I just had a lecturers meeting this afternoon in another school and then the lecturers were all complaining that online lecture, the students are not participative. For me, I think sometimes my students participate too much. Eh? Uh, all right. Uh, Hock Yong, is it? The unfortunate thing is this, uh, in all the private schools right now, we are progressively trying to bring the students back face-to-face. -face. We are. But can I tell you this, uh, because of the COVID situation, moving forward to Yong, it will not be 100% face-to-face for all the schools. It will be hybrid. All right? It will actually be hybrid. It will not be 100% face-to-face. So right now for Adventist, it's still 100% online. We are still not bringing back the students. You know why, Yong? Because to bring back the students now, even though the government say in the classroom, all right, there is no more requirement for social distancing, but that is provided if all the students have their mask on. Now, you want to come to the classroom with your mask on for eight hours. Eh? You don't want what? I mean, in the comfort of your own home, you can actually lie down on the bed. So a lot of students, because of this reason, they don't want to come back to the classroom. All right, they would rather prefer to go uh, to, to stay at home. So what happened here is that in a lot of other schools that I teach, eh, they are now beginning to bring the students back <clears throat> out of a class, out of a 50 students in the class, only 10 students come back. The other 40 decide to stay at home and then what happened? They lock on. Lock. So we have to do hybrid, you know. I got to handle the 10 students in the class and then at the same time, 40 students online. We have to do a live streaming. So it is for this reason, a lot of, stu a lot of schools are now thinking how they can actually get around this problem. You just imagine a Hock Yong, it's just like when uh, COVID first started, huh? everybody hated work from home, you know. Now you want them to go back to the office, everybody tell you no, they prefer work from home. <laughs> so it's the same thing now. All the students that I meet up, they all prefer online uh, a lesson. The reason is because when you come back to the classroom, uh, it can be very inconvenient, you know, because you've got to put on your mask. And then we don't know when the law will change again, eh, honestly. So therefore, in this case, a lot of uh, schools, they prefer to take a more careful approach 
So they do not want to bring the students back so fast. Uh, even one day, really, we can have masks off. All right. And that's when you will see that a lot of school, we learn from the experience of COVID, it will be blended, which means 30% face-to-face, -face, 70% online. All schools are doing that now. Okay, Jimson asked a question. Does the lecture follow PowerPoint slides by university? Uh, for me, no. I create my own PowerPoint slides. What happened here is that so long as we are able to achieve the same learning outcomes, that will be okay. Uh, most of the lecturers will tend to follow the PowerPoint slides and maybe they will add on to the PowerPoint slides provided by the university. But for my lesson, no. I tend to create my own PowerPoint slides because I embed a lot of activities into my lesson. So I tend to follow what the university wants me to do. And then I create my own PowerPoint slides. I create my own activities. Is that okay? Can? All right, good. Okay, so therefore, I've covered MBA and I've covered MSc. All right, so therefore, now you understand there is a difference between MBA as well as MSc. Yeah? All right, the delivery structure, two weeks per month, like I told you, two weekends and that's it. Saturday, Sunday. And because it is done online, you can be anywhere in the world you want. You can be in Poland. You can be in Japan. You can go on a holiday. Then Saturday, you just lock on and that's it. If you don't want to lock on, never mind. The lesson is uh, 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 recorded. Because it is online, there is no difference between attending the online session in real time and watching the video. There is really no difference. All right, because all right, uh, of there is a difference between interactivity and interaction. Eh? So for online lesson, there is interaction but there is no interactivity so therefore in this case what happened here is that you can see how all right that uh, even watching the video it is the same as attending the online lesson so the video will be recorded and you can actually watch it anytime on your handphone in the, while you're in the train or in the bus or whatever all right can so two weeks per month all right next one online learning with 24 times 7 access to e-resources 100 percent coursework and also live recording of all lessons. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, because it is online, we can actually record it. But if it's face-to-face, -face, then we need to invest in all kinds of, uh, you know, high-resolution technology uh, camera to record the lessons and then, you know, the acoustics in the room and uh, in order to actually enhance the audio. Uh, then it becomes a little messy. Whereas if we were to do it via Zoom, Zoom will help us to record it. So it's so much easier. Okay. Will there be minimum attendances? Uh, no. All right. No, there is no minimal attendance. Yes, of course, teaching materials will be provided. Definitely, it will be provided. All right. Can, but can I tell you this? Uh, as a master's student, uh, you cannot expect everything to be spoon-fed. All right. We will provide you with a basic. And then what happened here is that you will have to go and do your own you know, self-study and prepare and write the assignment. For me, uh, very simple, my course, because the students only need to submit an assignment, my whole course will focus on helping the students to complete their assignment. All right? So, therefore, in this case, the students will pass. Okay? Good. Yes, Govin, yes, there will be there will be graduation ceremony. Uh, of course, during the COVID period, don't have. La. All right, the past two years, because government didn't allow us ma, all right, to have a uh, social gathering and all that. But now, let's hope that the, uh, the, 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 the restrictions will be further relaxed. Eh? I think it will. La. Now you can go to Zook already. So what happened here is, I believe that there will be a graduation ceremony this year. Should be held somewhere in August or September. Now, even if, for example, for some reason, we cannot hold it in Singapore because of the restrictions, you can fly all the way to UK. Not a problem at all. What is the batch size for the MBA program? About core subjects, huh? uh, because we tend to, there are certain subjects that are actually common. We call them the core subjects. It can go up to about 55 students to 60 sometimes. Uh, but if you break it into the specialized module, then it will reduce to about for example, HR, uh, for example, you look at this, the HR, you know, these, the highlighted subjects are what we call the specialized subjects where the HR students will need to complete. Then in the cohort, maybe there can be 10 students, all right, because uh, it's a smaller group. But if you're talking about MBA, most of the students will pursue an MBA and that's where they will actually, you have a bigger crowd. I prefer to teach B class, uh, more participation, more sharing of experiences and all that. Prabhupada, does that answer your question? Okay, so we have case studies uh, in the class and also academic consultation, which means after you finish the lesson, so two weekends of lesson, after that, there will be another two sessions where the lecturer will meet you up via Zoom 
uh, um, you know, to discuss about your assignment. That's what we call consultation. So uh, there will be two sessions before you submit your assignment. He said, okay, so therefore there will be a lot of help. There will be a lot of help. Okay, Ken? Uh, you are talking about world ranking, uh, Sunil. World ranking, they are not, I, I, they are definitely not the top 100. They are definitely not the top 100. Now, I have to be very honest with you. Like I've said, I have been very upfront with you right at the beginning. I never boasted about Roehampton's ranking. The reason is because Roehampton program attracts a different crowd. So I don't want to compare Roehampton with the top 50, top 100 universities in the world. Probably we are not even the top 500 in the whole world. But hey, why bother? Like I've told you, because it attracts a different crowd of universe, a different crowd of students. So long as it is recognized. Now, of course, Sunil, if you are so concerned about the ranking, then please by all means go for Birmingham. Go for Buffalo University. Yeah? Go for University of London. Go for all these programs. If you are so really concerned about the ranking, because, all right, Roehampton University attract a different crowd of students. Like I told you, who do they attract? They attract the high-profile students, you know, who have spent a lot of years building up their career. And now they just want to learn something and move on with their lives. So they, the, the, my students coming onto the Roehampton program, they, the first question they will ask is, is the university recognized? The answer is yes. Okay, good. Frankie, let's talk about the course. Let's talk about the structure. They are not even interested in the ranking. All right, they are not. It is just like it is just like, for example, all right, asking the students who are going to SUTD, you know, SMU, uh, SUSS, all these students going there. Do they talk about ranking? They don't because all these universities are not ranked, including our SMU. Eh? You know, in Singapore, only two universities are ranked worldwide. That is NUS and NTU. SMU is not even world ranked. Yesterday, I was just having a conversation with my Roehampton student who graduated two years ago. He told me, Frankie, I am going to enroll myself with a DBA program with SMU. And I asked him, how much is it? He told me 168,000. I said, are you mad or what? They say, oh, because SMU ranking, ranking, ranking. And I told him, have you done your research work? I said, do you know that SMU is not even world ranked? Now, it is recognized and very popular in Singapore, but if you take the certificate into Malaysia, nobody cares about SMU because SMU is not world ranked. SUTD is not world ranked. SUSS is not world ranked. Therefore, I'm telling you now, Sunil, to be honest with you, Roehampton is not world ranked, but it attracts a different crowd. We have many students still want to go to SMU. We have many of our students in Singapore still want to go to SUSS. The reason is because these are the part-time professional students who want to move on with their life just by getting a degree. So it attracts a totally a total a total crowd, a different crowd altogether. All right, is this recognized in Singapore? Yes, it is. Probably the Singapore government will tell you any university that is recognized by the local government will be recognized by Singapore government. Uh, Ernest Chan, is it? You are HR practitioner, Ernest Chan. Can I be honest with you? I think we need to see far. I don't know how old you are. All right, if you are probably in your 30s or 40s, you have to see far. Now, you may tell me, Frankie, I'm only a HR person. But who knows, one day you may become a GM, right? Who knows, one day you may become a COO. Now, you may tell me, Frankie, I do not need it right now. It doesn't matter you don't need it right now because you're a HR person. But you may need it in the future. So why don't you do it now? So that when you need it, you get it. I give an example, Ernest, my very good friend. He was an engineer. We were in the army together. So what happened here is that he, he's a good friend of mine and he did a career switch at the age of 26. He was an engineer. Then he told me, Frankie, I got no future in engineering. I want to become an accountant. He went to study for his ACCA. And he became an accountant. Now, that was about the year 97 or 98. And that was the year I decided to pursue my MBA. And I told him, I said, why don't you come and join me for my MBA? He said, so Frankie, I just did a career switch. I want to actually concentrate on building my career. So I got no time to study for an MBA. So I went on to do my MBA on my own, you know. 20 years later, he is now a CFO of a public listed company. The chairman, 
he is working for a US company. Eh? The chairman wants to make him the CEO of this of, of the public listed company in Southeast Asia. The problem is that as a CEO of a public listed company, they need to profile you to the shareholders. All right, they need to profile you to the shareholders. You no know, Singapore Stock Exchange, the profile of the CEO and all the senior directors will be there. But he doesn't have an MBA. He only has an ACCA. He doesn't even have a degree. He said, they caught me up. Frankie, can you recommend me any MBA? I don't care. So long as it's from the university, recognized. I don't care whether it's University of Disneyland. Just get me an MBA, chop, chop, one year. And I told him, 1997, I asked you to study. Why did you do it? Now, if you were to do it together with me right now, you'll be the CEO. So I'm telling you now, Ernest, all right, we have to think far. Right now, you may not see that you need it because you are just a HR practitioner, but one day you may need it. Now, of course, Ernest, if you make up your mind that you want for the rest of your life to stay on as a HR person, then do an MSc in HR. All right, then do an MSc in HR. So it's really up to you. Okay, Sebastian asks, any job fairs after graduation? No, we don't do that. But hey, MOM conducts a lot of job fair. All right, so therefore, the public has a more than enough job fairs, especially during the COVID period. Eh? Would you be able to share the key profiles of alumni? I, I just did that just now. Uh, later on, you will see it. All right, in a slide, you will be able to see it. For sales manager, MBA is suitable for anybody. All right, I've told you already, MBA is a general master's degree that is for people who want to climb and take on a, gen a, a generalist role in the organization. Okay, Ken? Good. Are there any questions in the Q&A? Okay, good. So let's move on, yeah? Thank you so much. Keep the uh, questions coming eh, so that we can actually answer all these questions. So it is 100% coursework business focused. Like I told you, it is very practical. It actually focuses on the practical application of whatever that you learn in the course. Unlike the research university, ayoy, that one, you must go to the library and at least read 100 articles, 100 journals, you know, in order for you to complete an assignment. But Roehampton is not like that. They ask you to write a marketing plan. And you go and write. All right, Ken? Okay, good. David, no worries at all. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, David. All right. We are now talking about the Roehampton program. If you've got any other question, you can always ask me. All right. We can stay behind and talk to you. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> Jimson, <laughs> now I'm going to talk about it. Eh? Now, there is a difference between dissertation and consultancy project. In that... Dissertation focuses a lot on the research methodology. Dissertation, all right, is a piece of research, field research work that is related to a topic. For example, you can choose to write a dissertation on, say, the impact of COVID-19 on the aviation industry. Or you can talk about the impact of, say, a female leader on staff performance. You can talk about, say, for example, the impact of organization culture on staff uh, involvement. So therefore, you come up with a topic, you do your research to find out whether there is really an impact. Is there a relationship between female boss and staff performance? Now, that is called dissertation. It is about a topic consultancy project must be based on your company. All right, it must be based on a company. It is not a topic. All right, it must be based on the company, which means the company is facing some problem. As a consultant, you are going in to help the company to solve the problem. So the difference between dissertation and consultancy project is that dissertation focus a lot on research methodology and also it must be related to a topic. Consultancy project is related to a company. All right. And of course, consultancy project will also involve a viva. But can I tell you this, uh, Jimson? All right. 100% of my students will choose dissertation because consultancy project are uh, more difficult because you've got more work to do. Joseph, thesis is actually a word that we use to describe the work that you submit. So, dissertation is the subject title. You submit a thesis. Thesis is that report that you submit for dissertation. All right, Ken? Good. 
Govin, how will this MBA benefit me? Currently, I am 51 and service manager. Why not? Uh, uh, Govin, I have a lot of students who are past 50 years old. A lot of students are past 50 years old. See, so as a service manager, Govin, all right, you must have actually worked for about 30 years. So you belong to that category of students that actually spend 30 years of your lives, all right, climbing up the corporate ladder. Today, you are a service manager. Now, 30 years ago, Govin, when you joined the workforce, the workforce was not so educated. But today, you are managing a group of people who are probably from the polytechnics or even from who already got a degree. Now, if you don't have an MBA, then who will respect you as a service manager? Isn't it? Even when you talk to your clients, when you talk to your customers, now people will respect you more if on your name card you put that that you are qualified. So people will respect you more. So therefore, it is important. It, you know, don't think that age is a problem. Uh, today, I have a student who is at the age of 64 years old and she's in my class. She's a HR manager. And I asked her why. She told me for a simple reason because all my staff are degree holder. You know, but 30 years ago, when she start, first started her career, the population was not so educated. Right? But today, if you take a tomorrow, eh, you go down to Shenton Way, you take a stone and throw, you will hit a degree holder. Everybody seems to be a degree holder. So therefore, all right, if you have spent 20, 30 years of your life building up your career, and if you do not have a proper qualification, then Roehampton is the right program for you because all my students belong to that category. Okay, good. David, must we go outside do get uh nah David? Nowadays everything is done online. I like, don't need to go to the street and start distributing flyers or distributing questionnaire. Everything is done on Google Form. All right, so everything is done online now. Okay, like I've said, all right, when you join the Roehampton program, you will then be able to uh you will then be able to keep in touch with your alumni. Uh, a lot of students, they keep in touch with their friends, the seniors who have graduated. When it's time for them to do the dissertation, they just attach the question air in the group chat. Everybody will help them to fill up. All right, so you don't have to worry. Muhammad, is it a must to complete payment for the course? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> of course, you know, uh, I mean, fee must be fully paid up. I think there is installment. Later on, uh, my colleague from Aventis will tell you more about the uh, installment. Okay, are there any further questions? If not, I would like to hand over to my colleague in Aventis to tell you more about you know, the program and also the fee structure and also the alumni profile, so on and so forth. Are there questions? Now, don't have to worry. I will still be around. Uh, David, only you will know which is suitable for you. Only you will know. I mean, how would you know that University of London is suitable for you? How would you know Northumbria is suitable for you? How would you know Birmingham is suitable for you? Only you will know, David. Uh, the guideline is you have to be honest with yourself. What is it you want out of this qualification? If you are telling me, Frankie, I want ranking, then I'm telling you, you are in the wrong course. Because I'm telling you, all your classmates are not even interested in ranking. Now, it must be recognized, they are only interested in actually, all right, learning something, move on with their lives, and that's all. Okay, Ken? Oh, you graduated from UOL, David. Then Roehampton shouldn't be a problem for you. Lah. All right, the UOL is so tough, you know, if you are able to pass from UOL, then Roehampton is not a problem for you. All right, so therefore, in this case, you have already got a very good bachelor's degree that is well-ranked world class, then why should you even bother about MBA? Where is it from? So if you want to become a researcher, then you go back and do URL MBA. Uh, but you should know how tough it is, right? So what happened here is that, uh, like I told you, I don't want to compare an apple with an orange. All universities are good. All right? It just caters to different crowd and that's about it. Not because to MBA, PhD and DBA, which is more suitable. Uh, Joseph, there is a difference between PhD and DBA. Eh? DBA is for practitioner, PhD is for scholars. PhD is generally for those people who want to continue to do research work for the rest of their lives, which means they become scholar, write journals, participate in conference and all that. Mainly PhD will be the academics or the scientists. DBA is a professional qualification that is for practitioners. So therefore, if you want to stay on in the corporate world, you pursue a DBA. 
Yeah, David, you should know UOL is very tough. And then David, now that you got your D UOL already, share with your class, with everybody here. All right. Do you think it is worth going through so tough? I'm teaching UOL now, you know, with SIM. And I just spoke to my colleague just now. I said, honestly, I don't even know why my students choose UOL in the first place. Is it necessary to go through, to torture yourself so much, to go through such a tough degree? At the end of the day, David, are you better than your peers? Even with a UOL degree, you have to be honest with yourself. And that's why all my students in the Roehampton program are very pragmatic, down-to-earth people. Eh? They tell me, frankly, cut the BS. We, are, we don't need this degree. Even if I don't get this master's, I can still be a GM. Not a problem at all. But like I said, they just want to get this Roehampton MBA to move on. So therefore, the Roehampton MBA cater to a different crowd altogether. All right, I think it's already 8.15. All right, I would like to quickly pass over to my co colleague in Aventis. I will still be around. All right, I will still be around. Uh, so later on, if you have more questions, you can always ask. All right, good. So uh, I would like to now hand over to my colleague uh, in Aventis. Eileen? Okay, thank you, Frankie. Thank you, everyone, to stay here with us. That is really an engaging. It's not really a presentation. It's kind of a sharing. Okay, so... Uh, give me one minute. I'll share the screen and we'll continue with those questions you are asked. Okay. Yeah. Yes, just now, Frankie already mentioned about this point that like over 21 successful intakes, uh, we already run in Singapore and you're going to be the 22nd, 23rd and 24th for this year. Okay, so in terms of age, uh, I did receive some like um, feedback from my students. They mentioned, oh, I'm like uh, 50 plus. I'm not okay with this program. Yes, this is open for you. Uh, as you can see from the number we show here, like, um, average uh, our student is at 40 years old with 17 more than 17 years working experience in different industries okay so with this kind of MBA program is uh, we, we call it a platform for us to gather together to share our experience and to share our knowledge and to learn from each other okay all right so in terms of male and female uh, for the past few years, I will say the percentage of female grew accordingly. So it's not really a, a male-dominated force. Okay, we welcome females to join MBA program. Okay, thank you. Uh, Twenty-nine percent uh, senior management will be joined in your as your classmates, and fifty-four percent middle management, seventeen percent professionals and executives. Okay, so uh, you gonna make your students. Okay, your classmates from different countries. And recently, we do receive some like inquiry from students in, let's say, in China, in Hong Kong, even in like Africa, in other countries. They are very interested in this program because currently we hold it spread in like 100% online, which is very convenient for everyone to join and share. Okay, so uh, you got to meet your classmates from different industries, from medical, from shipment, your own business. So... We, we say this MBA program is really something you can share and really something can help you to open your mind, okay? To open your heart, welcome uh, new knowledge and to help you to build more confidence in your current and your future career. Okay, so our faculty, <laughs> I think you already know like um, the way Frankie shared, okay? And we do receive lots of good feedback, positive feedback about our professors, including Frankie, like they are very engaging, they're very approachable. Like whenever you have questions, whenever something you're not clear, they're always there to help you. Okay, so I want to share this one, like one point to all of you. Like, you know, in Chinese word, we call it yu. The yu, the word is like two meaning, the two different words. One is fish, one is fishing. So for our uh, Rahampton uh, University MBA program, so our professors, they intend to teach our students to share the knowledge that they can use it in future in their career. It's like, uh, share the knowledge for you to be able to do fishing, not really just chew the fish to your mouth and to just feed you, okay? So that's something different from uh, some other MBA programs. It's really designed for working adults, okay? Yeah, so these are the... 
our professor team. I believe uh, you already received the information with our brochure or email, so you can go in deep. All the professors will be appointed by Roehampton University. That is, like some students may ask whether they are from local or from like uh, Roehampton. Yes, they have to be appointed by the Roehampton University. Okay, so the degree you receive for this MBA is exactly the same as the one you did in campus. Okay, so uh, some students may ask about the eligibility, eligibility to apply this program. We, uh, you can see the detail from here, but it really depends like case by case. Let's say if you don't really have a diploma or you don't have a degree and you have like uh, years of experience in different positions or different industry, do feel free to send a message to our consultant and to our team and we would like to assist you based on your updated resume and your highest qualification okay so one point like we do uh, receive some inquiry from students who don't really have a diploma but have like more than 10 years working experience for this case we have this uh postgraduate diploma okay so this is a, a three-month bridge course for you as an option to build your knowledge and skill and to upgrade your qualification in order for you to speak, apply the MBA program in future. So for this uh, detail later, uh, if you have any questions you can ask or uh, you can drop a message or drop an email to us, we can clarify on this point. Okay, some students asking about the fee. Yes, the tuition fee is 22K800, it's standard, even though it's 100% online, but we say that this won't uh, dilute the quality of this program and the effort you want to put into this program. Okay, so for now, <clears throat> if you apply for this program, you're going to receive 2,000 uh, student uh, grant as a part for the coming Ju uh, July intake. Okay, so for whoever uh, registered for this course preview today, after that, when you submit your application within seven days, you're going to receive the application fee, which is 214 Weaver, okay? Uh, because you already saw this cost for so just a part of students on this. And for this tuition fee, will be payable over four installments. So before you start the course, you have to pay the first installment. Then after two months, the second one, and accordingly. 